This tutorial will show you how to manually segment features in your 3D images using GoFigure. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, you'll need to have already set up a database in order to save these manual segmentation results, so please see the previous tutorial if you don't yet know how to do that. In order to begin manually segmenting, the first thing you'll need to do is open a file from the database. And to do that, you can go to File and Use Database. Um, which I'll do in a second, but alternatively, if you've already opened this database file previously, you could go to Open Recent Files, Database Files, and see some other files that you've recently opened. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll go to, through this method, clicking on Use Database, and again, you'll want to use the uh, username and password that you've chosen yourself, but you can keep localhost here, and go ahead and click Next and then choose the project associated with the database file that you want to open. This is the project I'll be using here. And then open an existing imaging session and I'll be using this one to show you the manual segmentation process. So once you've got that done you can click finish and begin. Now that you have this database file open you're ready to begin manually segmenting. To do this, you can click on this pen icon up here, which will open this menu on the left. And you can reposition the orientation things of this menu. You'll also want to open this table widget, which shows you the traces you have saved in the database. I already have three saved here, but I'll show you how to create uh, new ones right now. The features you'll want to be manually segmenting are, of course, 3D features in these 3D images. But in order to do the manual segmentation, you'll need to segment um, the feature of interest in each 2D slice on its own. The segmentations in these 2D slices are called contours here. And a set of these contours together will define the actual three-dimensional segmentation of the feature that you're interested in and that is called a mesh. So this mesh is will have multiple contours associated with it which together uh, define the segmentation of your object of interest. To begin segmenting the feature that I'm interested in here which will be this, uh, this space right here, I'll have to first create a new mesh which I'll associate with this new feature that I'll be segmenting. And before creating a new mesh I can select the color that I want that mesh to be so I'll select red here and I'll also need to specify what cell type there is in this feature that I'm segmenting. When choosing what cell type and sub-cell type to put for this mesh um, that's really up to the experimenter who's using GoFigure. Um, so for this feature I'll be segmenting right now I can choose that the cell type might be neurons although really a better cell type here might be something like epithelium and for subcell type, you can choose something like nucleus, or you might add some other cell type, subcell type like membrane. And for the feature we're currently segmenting, which will be this large scale feature here, uh, subcell type doesn't have as clear of a meaning, but often what you'll be doing in GoFigure will be segmenting uh, particular features of individual cells, like their nucleus or their membrane in which case this field is particularly important. So now that I've selected these options, I can go ahead and choose Add a New Mesh here. And we'll see when we go to the table widget and click on Mesh, you can see that there's a new Mesh ID with the color that I chose for this new mesh that I've just created. The cell type and subcell type that I've just selected are associated with this particular mesh, this red mesh with Mesh ID 25 and not with necessarily with this previous mesh which might have its own cell type and subcell type associated with it. Alright, so now we're ready to start drawing contours of this feature of interest. And before I do that I'll show you this contour view here and we'll be able to see as I'm drawing these contours that new contours associated with the current mesh ID will appear here. Now, when I create these contours and validate them they'll currently have this color red which is in the selected color option here but if for some reason I want uh, a few contours within a given mesh to have a different color I can change that by changing this color here before validating those 
In order to make it clear to the user which contour they're in the process of drawing versus, cont versus contours that have previously been saved, um, you can use this settings button to choose what color you want actively added, uh, contours that are actively being edited to look like. So you can choose the width of active contours or the line color or the node color. You can see these nodes here. and the color of any single activated node. And you can see here that you can also choose custom colors, so I might want this to be pink, and I will add that to custom colors, and then I can use that. So now that I've got those setting pick, settings picked, I can click OK and begin contouring. Those settings I've just selected will be saved in GoFigure, so the next time I open the software, those same colors will be saved for my settings choices. Um, so now I can begin contouring this feature here, and it might be a little easier to see if I switch to the XY view. And to contour, you simply click at multiple points along the feature you're interested in contouring. And you can click as many points as you want. And once you think you've got the feature uh, successfully outlined, you can hit this validate button up here. Alternatively, there are some shortcuts on uh, Windows and Mac and Linux. On Windows and Linux, you can hit Control V for this validating, and on Mac, you can hit Apple V. So now that I've just clicked validate, you can see that in this contour table widget, this new contour that I've drawn has its own contour ID and is associated with this red mesh that we've uh, set up. So that contour is now successfully created. To create a second contour also associated with this mesh, I will switch the Z slice. So I'll move from slice 9 to slice 10. And you can see that this contour that I had drawn on the previous Z slice is still highlighted. So I'm able to just slightly modify things before validating for this new Z slices contour. So for instance, I might notice that here it might be good to move this point over here and I can adjust a few of these other points. But in general, it's much quicker to draw new contours based on the shape of previous Z slices contours. And so this is a nice feature. And once I've got this outlined, I can again go ahead and hit validate and we can see that contour also appears in the table widget. So I'll switch the Z slice one more time and draw another contour now that I've got that one validated. Um, you might notice that in this Z slice it really isn't appropriate to use the number of nodes that you've previously set up. So you can add a node if you want by clicking in between two nodes and that new node will appear which can also be moved around. Um, and you can also delete nodes by by holding the mouse over the node you'd like to delete and hitting the delete key on your keyboard. But defining the shape of a new contour based on the shape of the previous contour isn't always the ideal approach and in that case you can use this reinit button up here to reinitialize the contour so that you can start from scratch and draw a new contour which I'll do here and once you're happy with the shape of that contour again you just go ahead and hit validate that contour will appear up here and you can see that we've now successfully created three contours which together are associated with this mesh defining this 3D feature here and of course we can also return to the quad view to look at those contours we've just created uh, in a three-dimensional view, which is sometimes useful for visualizing how the segmentation you've done so far looks. And you can see that there are three contours here which are red, all associated with mesh ID 25, which is this mesh that I've chosen to be red. And you can see how one, two, three, they all appear here. These contours also appear down here in the ZX view. And you can 
can see them there. After having completed this process, if you're unhappy with the color of any of your contours, or the mesh that a particular contour is associated with, or even the shape of an individual contour, um, these are all things that you can edit later, and I'll show you how to do that in the next tutorial. Thanks, and enjoy using GoFigure.